Hello and welcome to Once More With Feeling, Periphery 3, Select Difficulty, the newest album from the band Periphery. Not even the third album, it's called Periphery 3, I believe. Yeah, what, what is with that? I sort of like, because I'm pretty sure it's, oh. I'm just going to quickly check what album number they're actually on. Because it sure as hell isn't three. This is their fifth album! So what happened to the others? That's the question. What did they just decide to just have? Is it part of a concept or something, maybe? I don't know. I'm not oh, sure. It's fairly familiar, periphery, because it's the first album of theirs I've heard. Um, I, I can't, I've listened to a couple of their songs before, but I can't remember for the life of me what album they're from. Um, well, I mean, two of their albums were called Juggernaut, Alpha and Omega, so they were obviously in a concept. But then you have Periphery, Periphery 2, this time it's personal. And now Periphery 3, select difficulty. So in, so I guess there's some sort of concept going on, though I wouldn't know for the life of me what it is. Uh, at least there is some kind of pattern behind it, even if it is not necessarily an easy to understand one. Maybe someone that actually listens to Periphery can tell us, because I don't know. Yeah. Uh, there's barely any information on the album aside from people involved so um so yeah uh there's a bit of an interesting album for both of us because mixed feelings about it is the best way to describe our attitudes indeed and somehow our attitudes seem to sync up pretty well yeah i mean for me it was a dead split of five of the songs I really enjoyed, five of them I was just eh about, and one song will get to one's, one of the songs. Um, but yeah, uh, getting to, into the album proper, because we don't have that much to detail on because information is a bit lacking, at least as Wikipedia, as far as Wikipedia is concerned. And let's face it, we're lazy. <laughs> if it was Devin Townsend, I would be willing to go that extra mile to find out information. But this is the very first full album of theirs I've listened to, and it didn't grab me either way. So. I can't really be bothered to look into it that hard. Great journalism! <laughs> well, it shows, really, your opinions of the album are not that strong, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I, think, um, I think the neutrals from Futurama put it the best way. I have no strong feelings on the matter either way. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the first song, The Price is Wrong, not because the price is right. I really like this song. In fact, I, f I feel it's a good opening track in terms of getting your attention. It's kind of very snappy to start up with. It's sort of a good heavy guitar riff. The vocals come in very soon as well. Mm. It sets the theme of the album. Yeah. I think what really works with it, I mean, it has a very jazz metal feel to it, which I really like. I. I've not looked into much jazz metal, but what I've heard, like Shining, who very first jazz metal band I ever heard, and first time I heard them was them supporting Devin Townsend, and they worked amazingly for that. Um, look I mean, up. I've seen a lot of people kind of compare Periphery to bands like Meshuggah, and I can definitely see that. To a certain extent, yes, but. I don't know, Meshuggah are a bit more chaotic. Hmm. It was just a kind of main guitar riff style that I've got going on a lot. Um, but I mean, this song I could, I would say you could compare to Meshuggah because it's very, it's very discordant. It, it sounds wrong in a way. Well, there's a kind of certain style they got going there. It's kind of an offset, really. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a very syncopated song and it's not simply syncopation syncopation it's it's discord there's not really at the start it works well because of how chaotic it is 
I mean, it kind of it sounds kind of like controlled chaos together because obviously everything's put in a very specific way for a very specific reason. Yeah, and the way it progresses works really well because it sort of finds an order to itself, and that works for when it gets to things like the breakdown, which. I kind of got a cult leader sort of vibe to the breakdowns. Mm. I can guess I can see that. And that makes it work even more when it just devolves into sheer brutal insanity at the end. You know, it just goes completely balls to the wall insane for the last, like, 30 seconds, 30, 45 seconds. Well, it's a good place to start. So it kind of comes in, grabs your attention, and then just doesn't let up for the entire length of the song. Hmm. Um, I definitely, I, I do agree that um, you don't quite notice how it flows into the next song, but I think oh, yeah. it benefits from that in a way. Kind of, it kind of just, it kind of has the kind of breakdown with the kind of background vocals thing going on. Yeah. The third, it kind of builds up within the last 15 seconds or so. Hmm. You know, obviously it's designed to do continue straight on into the next song yeah um, the next song Motormouth now the most immediate thing that grabbed me about Motormouth is curiously enough despite the title the singing is not in fact any faster than the rest of the songs mm, it's one of those, presumably the song title is done for a different reason than that I guess yeah well it's very clear the lyrics are talking about someone who just runs their mouth off all the time um, this is where we get into relatable songs because I think we all know someone like that. Mm. I don't know what to say about this song, also. Oh, we all we know people like that. Well, we do, yeah. But I mean, it's the song itself. Yeah. Um, I will say this much: it does feel like there's sort of a pumping engines feel to it. You know, there there is a driving force in the music. And it does have a sort of accelerating feel. Oh, I guess I can hear that. Especially during the breakdown, it feels like it's ramping up and ramping up as it progresses. So in that respect, I would say it does reflect the title to a certain extent. Mm. I, mean, I suppose... I don't know, this is one of the songs that didn't, personally didn't really grab my attention much at all. Yeah. I mean, it's not a bad song, it's just that... Other than the whole just eat shit by the mouth by the chorus, it just doesn't keep my attention. Fair dude. Um, so essentially, we can reverse our opinions for Motormouth and Marigold. Because mm. we go on to Marigold, and well, for me, it is the definition of I don't know how to feel about this song. <laughs> you know what, I quite like it. I mean, I think it's kind of. It does kind of help that it changes it up quite a lot. Mm. I mean, compared to the last two songs, we've kind of got the same kind of pacing throughout. This kind of changes it a lot, I think. Mm. Um, I think the key problem for me is that you know how it opens with the whole violin section, that sort of yeah. thing. I feel like I would have enjoyed it more if there was more of that throughout the song. Yeah, I can see that. Because um, there, there are orchestral bits that it really operatic and if that had been the entire song I would have absolutely loved it you know th that on its own would have raised my opinion of the album as a whole I don't know I mean, I mean it doesn't really show up in that many songs which is kind of disappointing really because it's something that you add a little bit of extra difference yeah it being oh this is a general metal stuff Having the kind of extra orchestral side of things is something that seems, if it's done right, can work really well. Yeah. I mean, stuff well, I listened to Flesh Got Apocalypse recently, they do it really quite well in some of their stuff. Yeah. I mean, if you if you consider a lot of other prog metal bands, you know, like with Devin Townsend and how he'll often just. He'll create these soundscapes on some of his albums that are just. Whoa. Like Ghost, you go through, you go to any song on that album, and it's just a, whoa, <laughs> I'm tripping balls, man. What well, kind of makes me think of the kind of, what well, I have not seen done often is use of brass instruments. Yeah. Other than Sir Bliss, I can't really think of anyone that does that. Not to a consistent level, at least. The only bands I can think of that 
involve brass instruments in metal are jazz metal bands. Mm. But I mean, that's the one thing we we steer bliss down out of me is a case of yep, it's straight up black metal with trombones. <laughs> so yeah. It would be interesting to hear more of that sort of thing go on. I thought it was kind of a case of no one... But if anyone tries it, they might not. It kind of possibly there's a lot of ways you could fuck it up. Mm. So, there are probably coffee bands that have tried that kind of thing, but they just didn't do it right and no one ever talked about them. <laughs> no, back on topic. Yeah. I mean, Marigold is the first song on the album that's like considerably longer than the previous ones. Mm. I've always been a fan of long songs. Because they do, obviously introduce a kind of more progressive side going on here. Yeah. I'm sure what the song reminds me of. It reminds me of another band, but I can't think who right now. Um, I can't think off the top of my head. This happens every episode. <laughs> I was going to listen to so much music, but there's always a case of something can remind you of something else, but there's so many possible bands that exist that I've heard that it could be numerous to Yeah. And, um, well... The amount of music I've be I've listened to in the past few days is sort of like I, I mean it's like I should have brought this up during during the review but um, with uh, the D Krupps single um, there's one particular breakdown that makes me go what is that from <laughs> you know you sort of like I know that's from something else I've heard it in something else. It's a particular riff that just makes you go, I know that, why do I know that? What's it from? Well, what, to come back to Marigold again, what I think really kind of took me by surprise, but actually kind of works, that one part where it's kind of goes into something kind of like stadium rock. Yeah. It's like, okay, this is not what I expected from this song, but they managed to pull it off. Yeah. Uh, it's things like that that I was sort of like, I wish the song was all like this, you know, the orchestral parts, the stadium rock parts. I, that's what got me interested in the song, which is why I'm not certain whether or not I like it, because there are certainly parts of the song I do like, but there are parts of the song that make me go, eh. I, know, I mean, personally, I think whilst it does have some parts that are more interesting than others, it's still kind of comes together quite nicely as a whole package. Yeah. The two parts kind of balance themselves out in such a way it's too put together in a rather nice way. Yeah. I mean, structurally, it, it changes up enough to keep it interesting for me. Yeah. I mean, this is a problem with a lot of long songs. It's just, they can just drag out a hell of a lot. But I think it's a, some song does a good job of, you know, keeping me interested. Yeah. I was kind of trying to the last minute and a half or so there's just kind of a weird soundscape. Mm. Which I think would actually kind of work better if the song was like a, a final song or something. Yeah. But it's not. But it's like that kind of ending makes you think this should kind of be at the end of the album. It's kind of fading away into the void. Mm. But no, it's right at the start of the album. It's like, this seems kind of off of the placement though. Yeah. But this happens, this happens every episode as well. We find that there are weird placements for the various songs. In, yeah, I think a lot of albums have that problem. I mean... I thought bands maybe just think, oh well, this song sounds good, let's stick it here, this song sounds good, stick it here, and the rest of them, they can go wherever they want. Mm. I remember how actually a creative process goes into placing songs in a particular order. I mean, doing it right seems surprisingly uncommon. Yeah. I thought that maybe some bands just don't really think about the concept as a whole. But if this just actually is a concept album, as title makes me think it is, then why is this song here? Yeah. I mean, there's always a with concept albums, there is always a progression. I mean, if, if you consider... Um, here's where I get branded a heretic for saying this. I am not a fan of Pink Floyd. In fact, I hate most of their music. It bores me to tears. Heretic. <laughs> None the more for that. There is a logical, natural progression between each song on their concept albums, which is like 90% of them. But, um, yeah, it's, it's weird. If this is a concept album, it's very difficult to work out the progression from song to song, because typically if on concept albums there is, you know, there's a logical sound progression as well as a lyrical one. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's no confirmation this actually is a concept album. It doesn't make me think it is. It's the title. Mm. Even so, regardless of whether it's a concept album or not, this song doesn't feel like it should be in this particular place. Yeah. 
in the middle, the, the final song of the album is actually quite well placed, I think. But this song also sounds like it should also be an ending song. Mm. Um, and just carry on wasting time before we go on to the next song, because, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then we go on to that one song I said. Fuck this song! Yeah, I'm, I wouldn't say fuck it, but it's probably a clear least favourite on the album for me. I I just I I hate this song. It it's it's like what happens if you take the worst qualities of metalcore, combine them with the worst qualities of pop punk. And when I say the worst qualities of pop punk, I'm talking good Charlotte. Oh god, I can hear it. I didn't even think of that, but now you mentioned it, yeah. Yeah, good Charlotte, simple plan, all those Ugh. It just... It doesn't have a good sign, to be fair. I mean, I think the second half does come across better than the first, but it's going to really hear that opening vocals, especially, I really do not like. And it kind of goes off, oh, I've heard five seconds of the song. That's enough. Next song. Yeah. I mean, when doing the re-listen of the album, I was sort of like, you know what, fuck this, I'm not listening through this. I already know I hate it, and I know multiple listen-throughs will not change that opinion. I mean, for the most part on the album, the vocals seem to fit quite well with the songs. But in this case, it just the music itself is not necessarily the problem. Just the vocals just don't work for me. It sounds too kind of whiny, I guess. Yeah. As I say, it's it's the standard angry white boy with no actual problems, but seems to think he has problems kind of attitude that comes across in this song. It's really weird because nothing else in the album really has this kind of sound. Yeah. It's like, what happened? Is this like meant to be played on the radio for people that like into the scene or whatever? Um. Was it actually a single release or not? It sounds like it might be. Well, let me just check because, um, it wasn't released on its own. Hmm. I mean, if I heard this on itself, I probably would not have any interest in checking out this album. Yeah, it would not be a good introduction. It would especially be a bad introduction song for the band as a whole. Yeah. Because, I mean, listen to the rest of... What else do you think? Because, I mean, it's really annoying. Um, listen to the rest of the album, and we think, oh, this is pretty good. Maybe we'll check out more of that stuff. And, okay, honestly, I probably wouldn't be that. I wouldn't be rushing to go and find more of that stuff. Yeah. Well, I do like this kind of stuff, it doesn't sound particularly amazing. It doesn't make me think, oh, oh my God, I need to go like download the rest of the Skog or go and buy their albums or anything. Mm. But this song specifically, if I just heard this on the one-off, I'd be like, eh, why people like this band again? It sounds like tons of other bands out there, none of which I particularly care for. Yeah. Um, but yeah, fuck that song. Moving on. Uh, remain Indoors. And don't buy the last song. Huh? Remain Indoors says so you don't have to hear the last song. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> uh... Eh, it's okay, I guess. Again, I have no strong feelings about this. Uh, well, I didn't necessarily agree with you up Marigold. I probably would agree with you on this. It's kind of that one of those, you know how in multiple album reviews we've done, there's always not like that one kind of song that just happens to be in between two other songs? Yeah. You don't really notice that much? Yeah. It seems to be the best equivalent of that on the album. Yeah. In this case, it's between a really good song, in my opinion, and a really not very good song. It kind of just gets lost in the dislike and like boundaries there. Yeah. I mean, it gets more interesting about halfway through, where it goes into more full-on prog metal style. And... I mean, what thing does die out to me, I guess, is the drumming in the song. Mm. It's pretty damn good. Yeah. I mean, it kind of... It kind of comes across a bit like a space age horror halfway through the song. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess I can do that. But that feel, that feel only lasts for about a minute and then gets kind of met again. You know what song actually does make me think of? Hmm. We think of the kind of song that we used at the ending of some kind of B movie horror film. Yeah. Like during the credits. Yeah, I can hear that. Kind of think back to watching the uh, Resident Evil movies. Kind of think it fit perfectly in place at the end of one of those. Hmm. Um, or one really of the many things I've seen on Sifi. Mm. Sci fi, or whatever the bloody name is, pronounce it. Mm. I think it's meant to be sci fi, but it's thought stupidly. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 
not much to say, boss. It's better than the previous song, but aside from that, eh. <laughs> yeah, I'll agree with that. Next, we've got Habitual Line Stepper. This is the first song on the album that legitimately really stood out to me. Yeah. I mean, Mario Kart sounded really good, but this this one made me go, I like this. I like this quite a lot. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it's got heavy, complex structures and aggressive vocals that, most importantly, the vocals don't sound like the singer's gargling gravel whilst his balls are in a vice. So it doesn't sound like Christian Bale's Batman? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a, a very kind of rapid drumming in the opening and the kind of uh, bits in the start. I just kind of grabbed my attention quite well. Yeah. I mean, it feels dramatic and epic. You know, the chanting kind of has this... Again, we get to operatic feels. It feels like a big song. Was well, it the one that sort of does bring in the kind of orchestral style of things later on as well? And as I mentioned to you before we did the review, the song, at least from like the halfway point, does remind me a lot of the Hamer stuff. Yeah. The first, the first album specifically. Mm. And whilst the Hamer are dead as a band, not even know they're dead, but they've, they're split. Their first album was really quite interesting, and I really enjoyed it, so it's going to make me think of that again, that's a good thing. Mm. Again, a bit where you, I can't remember how far in it is, I think it's like two, two and a half minutes in where it just completely changes up style. It just slows down a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely one of those cases of... To be honest, this album needed this song, because up until this point, the album's kind of meh. I mean, the first two songs, they're okay. I mean, I like them, but I wouldn't say they're amazing. Uh, up until Habitual Line Stepper, the album... It kind of meanders a bit. Yeah. Which is a problem, because it only is halfway through the album. Mm. I guess I didn't do it then, actually. It does... The interesting part... Okay, the opening's interesting, but the really interesting part's also about, like, until you just under two minutes in. Yeah. The kind of goes, the guitar work there kind of reminds me more of something like Dream Theater, which is interesting. Yeah. But then when the guitars, you know, get more synth and violin style about two minutes in, that segment is really, really good. Yeah. And that's, what, that's a bit that reminds me a lot of Nehemer, so. Which I think of, actually, well, specifically it makes me think of Perfect Death of the Mermaids from the second Nehemer album. Kind of atmospheric, kind of soundscape thing going on there. When the vocals come in, it's just, ah, uh, yes, this is this is what I've been waiting for for the half of this album. <laughs> Why did it take half an album to get to something this good? <laughs> yeah. This song brings weight to the album. Weight that was desperately needed. Oh, I'll end the violin section. It's really good. The thing is, the problem is if I heard this song first, mm. and then I thought, okay, this song's actually really good. I want to check out more by this band. If I ended up going back to one of the songs before this in the album, I'd probably think, oh, well, that's disappointing. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's one of those, it kind of makes you go, oh, so they can only manage to do really great songs once in a while. No, it's just kind of, kind of th this is what they're capable of, I'm just kind of hoping that they can actually meet this kind of level again. Hmm. I mean, I have heard some people say that the newest album is one of their weakest, so I'm going to go back and listen to some of their earlier stuff and see whether, you know, it's just a case of... If it's the kind of thing that happens a lot more often in the earlier stuff, then I would definitely end to go back. Yeah. From what I do remember of their earlier stuff, I would agree that this is probably their weakest album. Which, wouldn't the album, at least up to this point we've discussed so far, is this well, meandering, I'll say again. Mm. Then it does make me think that, oh, this is the weakest they can do, then oh, maybe they're not too bad. Maybe they'll actually, if this is their worst, then it could be a lot worse. Considering the worst albums we've heard from, say, oh, let's say um, Metallica, Megadeth, Guns N' Roses, you know, it, <laughs> we've kind of got a benchmark for how bad things can get. So if this is the worst that Periphery can do, I think we're fairly safe. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of, apart from like, maybe one or two songs, it's a case of... At worst, it's just forgettable. Yeah. At best, it's pretty damn good. Mm. And the picture of the step is, I said, probably the first true example on this album of them doing a really good job. Baron Cole gets close, but this is like, this is what I want. Give me more of this. <laughs> um, next song we've got is Flatline. Again, it's a mess song for me. Well, at least it isn't actually flappy lining. 
Mm. Um, now, there are, there are sort of demonic vocal effects that pop up here and there. I wish the whole song had been in the sort of demonic vocal effect style, because that gave gravitas to the song. I don't know. One thing that does really catch my attention here is that opening riff. Yeah. Is really, well, the main riff that starts up at the start and carries on for quite a distance mm. is really quite chunky. I like it. Yeah. So when that kick in, then the first vocal just being a really guttural cry. It's like, yeah. Mm. Um, it kind of goes through peaks and valleys, really, of going to awesome to, oh dear god, stop raping my ears. <laughs> and they're kind of very high, kind of high-pitched, flat, uh, clean vocals, so I don't particularly care for her. Yeah. Um, when it hits sort of the 320 mark, it really starts picking up and becomes sort of a whoa type song but before that it's sort of like could have done better <laughs> well the two things when it kind of changes up its style it changes quite differently there. I mean if I skip to 320 I think is this the same song mm. yeah I, yeah I definitely agree there you know, and again the guitar sounds especially a 320 once again makes me think of the hammer so I'm not going to stop shilling with the hammer, you know. I mean, I know they're you know, a defunct band now, but they were good. <laughs> eh, they might come back. I mean, it could end up like, um, oh, Misery Loves Company. This is true. I mean, they're fucking... They're going to be performing at Bloodstock. Well, I mean, going back to festivals is a good way of doing things. Hmm. Considering it's been... How long since the last album? Uh, 2009. Yeah, that's quite a while ago. <laughs> Seven years since I released something. <laughs> oh well. Um, yeah, as I say, it's, it's a mess song for me. But uh, this seems to be kind of running theme of this album. Which is sad, because when they do really good, they do really good. Yeah. It seems to be a very hit and miss kind of collection of songs. And it's one of those, well, I was saying about how the score is going to be decidedly average. <laughs> I, prefer, I would prefer there to be a few a hit and miss per song thing rather than this. The problem is a lot of these songs are kind of hit and miss even during the songs. Yeah. That's always awkward because it's like, oh, I really like this part of the song, but the rest of it I don't like. Yeah. Um, moving on to what we agree is contender for the best song on the album. Absalom. Well, this is supposed to be Absalom, I guess. Is Absalom even a word? I don't even sure. I believe it is. The first thing I find from Absalom is periphery. Hmm, okay then. I thought the first time this has happened. Hmm. So. So yeah, if I just search Absalom, it's just a case of periphery, 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 and periphery. Pretty much. So. One thing, that, uh, one thing I have found that isn't periphery is someone playing Hearthstone under the username for Absalom. <laughs> so yeah, it may not actually mean anything. But... Probably it's a surname. Hmm. But regardless of whether or not it does actually mean anything, this song definitely matches up to our theory stated in previous episodes of gradual build-up. It's the best thing. Yeah. Because it takes... A... How long is it until they actually start any lyrics? It's good... 30 seconds if not longer mm -hmm. also what's interesting to know is that this is a good example of you know them using clean vocals that actually sound good yeah can some of the songs here I don't particularly care for them but they sound good here it's it's difficult to define what make makes it work in this case I think it's just it feels like this was the day that they came into the recording studio and everything was on point Okay then, that's interesting. Mm. I was reading up on, because I went on all the links on the uh, Searching for Absalom. According to this one person, citation needed, but four songs on the album used to be demos from way back. Hmm. I don't know which ones, but we need to know if the multiple tracks have been, you know, adapted versions of older songs. Hmm. It makes you wonder whether they were, you know, didn't get past the demo stage because they just weren't that good. I mean, that, the thing is, you come across various bands who do that, and you, when you find out that the songs were demos, you go, yeah, I can see why this was never released before. Yeah. 
but yeah um i think again we what we're saying about marigold and how it would work better with more orchestra and operatic feel with Absalom, what I feel makes it work is the fact that it's constantly exchanging between heavy instrumentation and powerful, really effective and at times rather haunting orchestral and piano work. Hmm. Okay, apparently Absalom itself actually uses parts of a way older song. Oh? To lose the things it's a song I'm going to tell here is that it's a previous band that the front man was in. Mm-hmm. But quite a few stuff on this album, including the second half of the song, is actually essentially adapted versions of that. Huh. So maybe the reason it works so well is because he's just been working and working and working on perfecting it. Quite possible. We'll have to look into this in the future. Hmm. Uh, I know we're kind of rushing through the songs, but that's because we don't know that much and we've not got that much information. Um, so yeah, uh, the next song, Catch Fire. Well, sure, the battle call. Le Shrug of Ages! The Shrugger? <laughs> that was <laughs> bad! <laughs> <laughs> After mentioning the Shrugger earlier, and just the way we went, Le Shrugger, it's like, wait a minute, a perfect example of a crappy pun here. But yeah, that's how meh I find this song. In fact, I might as well go with this because I've been saying about it being so meh. Um, because it's Catch Fire and after it you've got Prayer Position. I don't even notice the song changes! <laughs> but if, uh, it does happen also within the Price is Wrong and Motor Mouth of it. Yeah, but more so here. I, I mean, when I say I don't notice the song changes, it's a case of... I click on Winamp just to see if the song has changed because I don't it doesn't register that's how samey they are it's like listening to a whole Dragon Force album <laughs> but mm, it's just Cash White doesn't stand out it sounds other than maybe the chugging bass which is pretty cool I guess mm. it sounds metalcore yeah that's <laughs> like lit- it's the best way of describing it, is it sounds like a metalcore song, and there's thousands of those things out there. Yeah, and so does Prayer Position. Prayer Position is probably even more so, considering it's got a kind of hard edge to it than Catch Fire does. Yeah. But Catch Fire is kind of in a lower, kind of, I don't know, kind of more... It's kind of a kind of pop-punky kind of metalcore style. Yeah. Whilst Prayer Position sounds just more straight-up metalcore. Yeah. But in both cases, I'm just sort of like, wait, the song changed? Hmm? I am compl- I mean, I thought- last night when I was listening t- through the album, I thought maybe it was a case of, oh, I'm just tired, that's why it didn't register. But no, fully awake, and it still didn't register that the song changed. <laughs> oh well, I just found a poll on Straw Poll. Right, what's your favourite song on the album? Absalom is top, followed by Lune and Remain Indoors, then Marigold and Habitual Line Stepper. Huh. So it seems that the general consensus with over 200 votes on this poll is the similar kind of consensus we have. With the exception of Remain Indoors. Yeah, but I, can, I guess I can see that as an outlier. I mean, the second half is pretty damn good. Mm. Um, yeah, I might as well just... Considering we're both very met on both Catch Fire and Prayer Position. Yeah, I mean, Prayer Position does have a really nice riff in the intro, but it doesn't really go anywhere after that. Yeah, so... Might as well go on to the last one, Loon, which is... It gets to be, it gets to be Lune. No, it's Loon. Is it? Yeah, because it's, it's the French for Moon. The advantages of listening to French music. <laughs> so the only French band I can even recall that I listen to off the top of my head is Year of No Light, which being a post-metal band with entirely ground vocals probably doesn't help. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas um, the key French band I listen to ah, is... Ah, actually. Yeah. A lot of that's not in French. Well, not actually in French. Some of it is. But the key ba- French band I listen to is Indochine, who have a song that's called Je Demande à la Lune. It is. It is. But between Alsace and Euro, no, like, neither of them, you know, necessarily... Well, I suppose Alsace does. Man, I can't wait to see Alsace. <laughs> um, but yeah, Lune... As a closing song, they made a right choice. Because mm. it feels epic. 
it feels like a big sweeping it has a sense of scale about it that works perfectly for a closing track it definitely feels like it's a closing song um it's got orchestral parts it's got the heavy forceful driving aspects of earlier songs it just feels like a big song once again it also has the uh, building to a climax yeah which, as we've mentioned countless times it's something we love mm. want to make babies with climaxes <laughs> yeah. although the fact that after saying that I just go on to the page and lost of him for this particular song the first comment is just erection <laughs> of course God, when is it? When is Crotch Duster going to release a new song? I'll quote what they said themselves of a couple of years ago. When it's done. <laughs> that's the uh, that's the excuse that a parent gives a whiny child. It's also the kind of excuse that I would expect from Crotch Duster. Um. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, the only pro, the only unfortunate thing about Loon is the fact that. It's a shame that it's only indicative of some of the quality of the album, as opposed to the album as a whole. Yeah. You know, it, I mean, if the album as a whole was like Loon, Absalom, Habitual Line Stepper, then, you know. It'd be a really good album. Yeah. I mean, it would at least be a four out of five. Possibly higher. I'm... I could very well double the scoring just to give me extra points to give it. Because <laughs> those three songs are very, very good. But, yeah, I, I'd say Loon is a good song as a song to get into Periphery. If you're wanting songs to recommend the band by, then go for Loon, Absalom, Habitual Line Stepper, and I would say Marigold to a certain extent. Um... I know Pierce would say that Marigold is a song to recommend them by as well, but... I would, but those four are definitely the ones that stand out to me. Mm. I'd probably say, as a one single song, if I had to choose one, probably Absalom. Yeah, i definitely agree there. Well, although Habitual Line Step, it does have a good combination of you know, the kind of harder side of things, along with the more orchestral bridge part in the middle as well. Yeah. Um... Not much else to say, really, aside from giving the score, which I I did discuss with Pierce earlier that it was a decidedly average score. Of I can't actually give this album any more than two and a half peripheral visions out of five. It's because you can't see the bits on the edge, you know? Um, yeah, because of the fact that half the songs I find meh, Half the songs I find really good, and then there's one song that makes me go, Kel! Um, how about you? Um, I'd probably be inclined to agree with that. It probably may be edge up to a three, because I mean, other than the way the news goes, there's nothing I really hate her. Yeah. And whilst the rest of it is either A, really good, in the case of Absalom, Luna, Loon, well. Habitual Line Stepper and Marigold. Mm. They, I said that all those are probably good 4, 4.5 out of 5 or whatever. Mm. The rest of it is probably average or better. And since that means... I mean, it's really logical about this, I don't know why. That means a bunch of songs above average, a bunch of songs at average, and only one below average. That should theoretically mean above average. Mm. I do not know why I'm analysing this so much. I don't know either. <laughs> So yeah, 3 out of 10. 3 out of 10, 3 out of 5. <laughs> Ouch! 3 out of 10! <laughs> no, that's a bit too harsh. 3 out of 5 is my personal opinion. Essentially it's a 6 out of 10, so... Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, I will clarify in the case of the way the news goes. It certainly wouldn't get into my top 10 or tw even top 20 most hated songs. Probably wouldn't even get into my top 100. I just really don't like it. Uh, I would, wouldn't be. I wouldn't say it's even close. I mean, yeah, I don't care for it as a song, but it's not particularly offensive or anything. It's just a case of I don't really like it that much. It doesn't make. It doesn't really imbue any reaction to me other than why should I care? <laughs> I, I think that's part of the reason I hate. I hate it is because I just get a, eh, you're not saying anything I should care about. 
But yeah, I mean, other than probably the placement of Marigold, I'd say the track ordering is pretty effective as well. Yeah. But then again, I suppose Marigold turns like an ending song, but so does Loon, so mm. you can't really end an album twice. <laughs> Unless you're Lord of the Rings. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> But I mean, whilst I don't think Marigold necessarily works in that place, I don't know where else you'd even put it. Yeah. I mean, if I had... If this album was one of those albums that had, like, an interlude segment, mm. just having it before that would make sense. But the problem is the album doesn't one of those. Yeah, if, if there was an interlude, then it would work that way, but... And again, the ending of Marigold, last minute or so, essentially is an interlude. Yeah. It sounds like an interlude. Hmm. But it, makes sense, it doesn't make any sense to me to have an interlude segment so early on in the album. Yeah, it's... If it was maybe, I don't know, after Rain Indoors or Habitual Line Stuff or somewhere around there. Mm. Mm. In the split between the middle of the album. Probably after Rain Indoors, so it's probably a better place for it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, aside from that, uh, not really much more to comment on. Um... But after hearing the few songs in here that I legitimately really like, I may well go back and check out some of their earlier stuff just to see whether there's more like that. Same. I mean, a lot of people seem to regard Juggernaut as their best album, so we go back and check that out see what it's like. Yeah. I mean, maybe we'll do, maybe I'll know, know in the future, be like, yeah, oh, I like this album. Hmm. Prefer a pretty good deal. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Juggernaut is the album that I saw, saw, uh, that I heard uh, a few songs from, so... Yeah, I'd, I'd definitely go back and check out ones like that. Um, but yeah, that's it for this episode. No idea what we're going to be reviewing next. Well, right now, there's not much coming out, because every bloody thing that I know about is coming out in September. Uh, or October. There's about nine albums I'm looking forward to coming out, all within that period. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. A- actually, later this month is uh, Lindsay Sterling. True. Also, technically, September's next month anyway. I mean, August. When did you come from? Uh, let's see. Um, well, in the next few days... Uh, in the next few days, we've got um, the new Tarja album, so that'll be interesting. Uh, and I wouldn't guarantee you to give a good review to that, because I never particularly care for Tarja myself. Uh, I, I'd say she's better solo than she was with um, Nightwish, and considering that I actually am a fan of Tarja, that says a lot. That's fair. Um, We've got so much stuff coming out in the year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, in a couple of weeks we've got Lindsay Sterling's new album, uh, there's also Sodom's new album, and uh, Twilight Forces. Uh, oh yeah, true. So, we've got a few things that we can go over in the next few weeks. Until we can't for the gigantic mess. Just oh god, too many albums to review at once. Yeah, because set oh could god, do, could do Insomnium, New Ghost, could do um, Nick Cave, New Kitty Tunstall, there's new Devin, like new Devin Townsend. There's like three or four other albums I can't think of off the top of my head right now. It's all coming out. New Warpaint coming out in September as well now. Uh, let's see. Well, in September we've got Meatloaf, Nick Cave, Tesseract, Insomnium, oh, Epica. <laughs> Ghost, Katie Tunstall, <laughs> Devin Townsend. <laughs> October's got mono as well. I think there's something else, at least in October as well. Um, Beck. Yeah. Uh, Testament. Uh, I think there's some point this year. Yeah. Ennio Morricone. Ooh, really good. Uh, November. Funny, quite <laughs> November, we've got Hammerfall, so we can. That can be one of the things we review in November. Yay! Um, Fire Metal. Huh? I did not listen to enough Fire Metal, really. Hmm. Uh, oh, Bad, Bad Religion should be releasing an album this this year, some point. Bon Jovi is, has an album coming out at some point this year. Uh, so we've got a few albums that we can go more, over. More than a few, I think. Yeah. So I probably won't even be able to do all of these because there's so bloody many of them. Mm. There's a good chance that we'll just have to do a sort of, you know what? Oh god, Meshuggah is. Meshuggah and Metallica are both releasing new albums, and considering. You know, 
We've made enough jokes about Metallica in terms of Saint Anger, so we should really review something by them, even if it turns out to be really, really awful. Well, uh, I mean, they've improved since Saint Anger, so... You haven't Lulu heard Lulu. Be... Lulu. I haven't heard Lulu, this is true. Lulu was awful. <laughs> Fair enough. Nothing I heard of Death Magnetic, so... Mm. Death Magnetic, I'll say, was a return to form. I, I find myself going back and forth over my opinions of Death Magnetic, but it was better than previous offerings. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably, say, I'll probably rank it above Load, Reload and Saint Anger. Actually, Load is one of my favourite albums. Loads of people oh. hate Load for some reason, but I really like it. It's... Well, actually, it's very similar to this album. Yeah. Some songs are really good, some just don't do anything. Some just aren't very good. But, anyway... Yeah, Load and Reload kind of had that same kind of thing as Use Your Illusion 1 and 2 by Guns N' Roses. In fact, it should have just been one album with the better parts. True. But, anyway, uh, that's it for this review. We'll... I wonder whether you could do that periphery and have like, the best songs of all three of the new ones and see when it to get through one good album. We'll have to investigate. Indeed. Anyway, um, actually, in the interim, probably do a what songs we've been listening to, generally speaking, and also do a couple more retrospectives. We still need to finish the Hurt one. This is true. I'm going to have lost track of the, that last best of an album. Yeah. I, I will <laughs> say this much, the album before their most recent one is definitely a return to form. That is good to hear. But yeah. Watch this space for whatever we decide to review next. Um, that's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me.